Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from the Federal University of Minas Gerais in Brazil. In the last class, we saw that a data flow analysis can be seen as a system of equations. Then we saw how to solve them efficiently. Now we will talk a bit about the meaning of a solution of a data flow analysis. To start with, let's see again why our algorithms stop. What's interesting to notice is that we are reaching a fixed point with our algorithm. A moment when the in and out sets stop changing. A fixed point of a function is an element of that function so that the function applied onto the element is the element itself. Notice that the fixed point of a function is not unique. Do you remember that we had represented our data flow system of constraints as a function? So, our algorithm is finding the fixed point of this function. Fixed points of functions that range on lattices have lots of interesting properties. For instance, the LUB, least upper bound if you remember, of two fixed points is also a fixed point. Same thing for the GLB, the greatest lower bound of two fixed points. These relations are subsumed by what is today called the knaster tarski theorem. The theorem says that the set of fixed points of, of a monotone function that ranges on a lattice also forms a lattice. Given that the same system of constraints can have multiple fixed points, which one is the one that we find? Well, we find the maximum of them, the greatest fixed point. This happens if we are using the meet operator. If we're using join, then we find the minimum fixed point. There is a proof about that in Nielsen's book. So, if we are using meet, the maximum fixed point is actually the tightest. I mean, meet always reduces information. In other words, it moves down over the lattice, I mean. Then the maximum fixed point is the first fixed point that we find. However, even though the solution is tight, it is still very conservative. For instance, what would be a solution to reaching definitions for this program? We had seen that before, do you remember? Perhaps you can stop the video and then compute reaching definitions for this program, assuming that the true part of the branch goes to the left side of the CFG. Here's the solution, by the way. We say that the solution is conservative. Do you remember what does that mean, to be conservative? Well, in a way, it means that we are reporting facts that may never happen in practice. In this example, we can never arrive at point D4. So definitions will never reach that point because the branch at D3 is always false. But the static analysis that is still say that the definitions at D1 and D2 can reach that point. We call this information false positives because we are saying things that will never happen. But false positives are not really wrong. They are just imprecise in the case of reaching definitions. Let me explain what's going on with, a, with pictures. Let's imagine for a while that the actual behavior of a program is the gray area in this figure. We want to reconstruct this gray area from observing some characteristics of the program. We cannot see the entire program, I mean, we cannot see the execution of the program, so we, we extract constraints from it. All that the static analysis can see are the constraints. Let's imagine that the constraints, I mean, the system of constraints, are these points. So we can see the, these points and now we need to get back the gray area. As you see, that's impossible. Just the points do not give us enough information to get back the gray area. But we can still report all the areas that are gray and possibly spaces that are not. We can try to approximate the gray area. For instance, here is an approximation. We got all the gray regions, for sure. But we also got non-gray regions. These parts that we report as gray but that are not, they are called false positives. We could be more conservative, of course. We can imagine that the MFP solution is the tightest convex hole. Any other solution to the constraint system 
will be more conservative than that. In other words, it's okay to say that a program may do more than it really does when we are solving a May analysis. The more conservative we are, the less useful information we produce. What's bad is to say that a program may do less than what it really does. This would be called a false negative. False negatives in a May analysis are wrong. The analysis would be wrong. And in contrast, false positives in a must analysis would be wrong. See, meet operations don't bother with false positives, but false negatives hurt them. And join operations don't bother with false negatives, but false positives make them wrong. But what would be an ideal solution to a data flow analysis? I mean, when we run a static analysis, we want to know some property of a program. The program has many paths, and we want to know that if regardless of the path taken, the property will be always true. Well, if we want to know some property of a program, we could simply run it, and then check if the property occurs, or if it is always true. But then, that's undecidable. That's from Rice's theorem. We cannot really know an interesting property of a program always, because the program may not terminate to start with. So we need to settle for conservative approximations of the program's behavior. The maximum fixed point, MF, MFP for short, is an approximation of the program, but it's conservative. And what would be an ideal solution about the behavior of the program? Well, to find about the behavior of the program, we could compute the data flow facts in separate about every possible path in the program. Every poth possible path, I mean. By a possible path, I mean paths that can execute, indeed, during an actual run of the program. We can run a data flow analysis independently per possible path. And then, once we have this data flow analysis for every possible path, we will know if the property is true or not, according to the data flow analysis. We can imagine that we have, in this case, a transfer function for every possible path in the program. Then, the ideal solution for some program point is the merge of all the transfer functions of all the paths that lead to that program point. In this way, any solution that is larger than what we call the ideal solution is conservative. And any solution that is smaller, in the lattice sense, is wrong. However, finding the ideal solution is impossible. The program might contain an infinite number of possible paths. The program may loop forever. It might never terminate. And then we cannot really compute the transfer functions for all the possible paths in a program. So getting the ideal solution is impossible. But there is something that we can still do. We can compute a solution that's called meet over all paths. MOP for short. Instead of picking up all the dynamic paths, I mean all the possible paths, we take only the static paths. The structural path is within the CFG of the program, I mean. And then we run meet over the transfer functions of these paths. I'm leaving two questions here to make sure that you understand what I'm talking about. First, if you remember our iterative solver, does it compute the MOP? And another question. What's the difference between the MOP and the ideal solution? I mean, I said it before, but do, do you remember what I said? So, answering the first question, the meet over all paths is not the solution that we obtain to a constraint system using our iterative solver, except if the transfer functions are distributive. We say that the data flow analysis is distributive if the transfer function of a meet equals the meet of the transfer function. For analysis that have these properties, the meet over all paths is really what we are computing. If the data flow analysis is not distributive, then we are computing some solution that's less precise than the meet over all paths. So do you remember those equations that we have used for liveness analysis or reaching definitions? Let's focus on liveness analysis. K 
can you show that transfer functions used in liveness analysis were distributed? In liveness, we had transfer functions of this form, involving set, difference, and union. Do you remember? In this case, with some algebra, we can show that the transfer function of a meet operation is the same as the meet of the result of independent applications of the transfer function. I've left a proof here for you, which you can read if you want, now or later. To see why these equalities hold, just remember that meet is some set operation, I mean, either intersection or the union in this example. So, to recap, our iterative solver picks up a constraint system and keeps iterating it, evaluating each constraint. As long as the constraints are represented by monotone transfer functions, we will reach a fixed point upon evaluating them over and over. This fixed point will be the meet over all paths if the constraint system is distributive. Let's summarize this discussion. If we want to know some property of a program, we could run it and then check the property. Or we could compute transfer functions for every possible path, I mean every path that really might occur during the execution of the program. However, that's impossible, I mean that's undecidable. We could also compute the meet of all the transfer functions over all paths that exist in the CFG of the program. But that's exponential. I mean, we can easily build programs with nests of if then else with an exponential number of paths. And our iterative solver equals the meet over all paths when the system of constraints is distributive. Otherwise, it is still correct, however, less precise. So that's it for the meaning of a solution of a data flow system. I know the subject's hard, but don't worry, we can talk about it offline. And there are some exercises for you in the course's webpage. And if you have questions, feel free to write me.